So before I get into this video, I have to make something as clear as possible. I'm guessing that quite a few of you didn't actually read the whole title. Now, I'm not saying that in a rude way, I'm just saying that as in... So you weren't confused, and that you don't actually go out rating the comments because you think you clicked on the wrong video. I know, the PS4 originally came out on November 29th, 2013. I'm very aware of that. But in Japan, the PS4 came out on February 22nd, 2014. So the PS4 is now 5 years old in Japan, not around the entire globe. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the actual topic that you were waiting to see. So yes, the PS4 is now 5 years old, which is probably going to make you feel old yourself, because it really doesn't feel that long ago when the original PS4 was announced. I know that seems like a pretty corny thing to say, but I'm being honest, it does not feel that long ago when the PS4 originally was announced. And I just want to take a moment to really discuss how far the PS4 has come, and how far PlayStation in general has come in the last 5 years. So if you remember the disaster that was E3 2013 with Microsoft's subpar announcement, in my opinion, of the Xbox One, a lot of people thought it was terrible. I didn't think it was too bad because I could kind of see what they were trying to do, where they were sort of positioning it as a gaming console and also a meeting media box, but then they kind of focused too much on the media side of the Xbox One and that got everyone pissed at Microsoft. But then Sony took the center stage, and they did a much better job than Microsoft. They made it clear that the PS4 is a console for gamers. It's not an Xbox One, it's not a media box, which, yes, it can play some media features, but it's made for gamers. That's literally why PlayStation was made in general. And that was a part that the Xbox team missed out on, and that got Microsoft into some hot water. And then after that, Sony realized that, hey, our competitor actually did a worse job than us at E3. So then they looked into what the community was saying, and what they found was that people were complaining that the Xbox One was not nearly as powerful as the PS4, the original PS4, and it was way more expensive. It was like another $100 more because of the Kinect. And Sony realized that real quick, and then they started promoting that. That's why when you look at a lot of early PS4 ads, you see that Sony really tries to embrace the power of the PS4, saying like, it can have higher resolution games than the Xbox One and all that. That's just a brief example. And yeah, games on the PS4 looks way better than the Xbox One. In the Xbox team's defense though, they did change presidents, but the damage of the Xbox One's reveal really hurt the console compared to the PS4. Then, as the days and the weeks and the years went by, the power of the PS4 was starting to become more obsolete, not compared to the Xbox One, but compared to, mm, I'm gonna have to bring this up, modern PCs. And that's always been a real problem with consoles, except for this generation, which I'll get into at the end, where you have a console, and it's probably gonna last you maybe five or six years, because PCs, especially in the 21st century, PCs have been advancing so much that when you get a new PC, one year later you're probably going to install a new graphics card and it will be a huge, huge difference compared to one year ago. Consoles didn't have that, at least until the 8th generation. So soon, the PS4 was falling behind and Sony realized that, hey, we need to come out with another console to, you know, show people that the PlayStation 4 is still a powerful console. Fast forward to 2016 and the PS4 Pro was announced and I have to say I was pretty impressed by the PS4 Pro's announcement. Sony kind of tried to follow up with their original PS4 announcement in my opinion. They didn't do as great of a job, but they still did a good enough job to warrant someone buying a PS4 Pro. But that same year Microsoft announced the Project Scorpio and the Xbox One S, so 2016 was filled to the brim with competition. Now the reason that I was bringing that whole little history lesson up was because I really do think that the PS4 has come a very long way since it originally came out. In 2018, there is so many great games for the PS4 that if you tried to count them, you would be counting for a very long time. Some of my personal favorites are the Shadow of the Colossus Remastered Edition, Horizon Zero Dawn, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, and way more. Something that actually might be kind of surprising to you is that I actually don't own a PS4, 
It's one of the consoles that I've been really, really interested in, and I really do like, but I never got around to actually buying one. Mainly just because I didn't really want to get one, because I'm one of those people who always wants the newest stuff, that's just kind of like this bad habit I have. You know what I'm talking about, where something new comes out, and you just have a craving to get your hands on it. So I always have this fear in the back of my head that I'm going to buy a PS4, which this happened to me with the Xbox One, so my fear was just instantly amplified. And then, six months later, something new is going to come out. Like I said, I bought an Xbox One, and then, for even cheaper, six months later, the Xbox One S came out, and it was much more powerful, which was kind of disappointing, but that's how it works. So you can't really blame Microsoft for that. But anyway, what do you think of the PS4? What's some of your favorite moments with it? Let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, then I would appreciate it if you shared this video on social media, but this is always up to you. If you want to check out my social medias, I'll have them linked in the description. And see you.